<laughs> oh, hi there. Uh, it's Kevin Biddick Bennett here, uh, KPB, if you're nasty. Um, today is a bit different. We're not doing a random low budget music video or a, a slightly inappropriate lip sync amongst family members. Uh, today is about Christmas and how the Pittock Bennett household does it. It is not an instructional video. Christmas is what you want to make it. It is how you do it. They could be old traditions that you've inherited from your parents or new ones you've got with a partner, whatever. We're not here to tell you what to do. This is just Christmas in our house. You might get some inspiration. Who knows? It's also a video to celebrate the talents of my better half, Michael. He's remarkably camera shy for someone who is infinitely better on the eye than I am. Uh, but he's very skilled and hopefully this video will make that apparent. Uh, so yes, this is Christmas in the Pittock Bennett household. Christmas begins prep-wise uh, the last weekend of November. It takes about a week and we need to be Christmas ready for December. I don't want to hear any of that. Oh, it's too early. Oh, you don't put decorations up. Oh, what about the advent? <coughs> Quite frankly, Christmas is what you want to do. And let's be honest, it's been a bit of a shitty year. The sooner we can cheer ourselves up, the better. Using a catchphrase, it's for our mental health. Put your damn tree up. Enjoy it. Again, do Christmas as you want to do it. So we begin the week before December, the weekend before December, with tree prep. So stage one, Christmas tree needs assembling for us. It's in three parts. It needs floofing, uh, spreading it all out. Don't be afraid to wiggle those branches. Must be done with Christmas snacks and music. Snack wise this year, these little gammon numbers very crispy and music wise for the sake of the YouTube video we are listening to generic license free Christmas music number four nice our tree is not pre-lit we are control freaks we like to know exactly where the lights are going thank you very much if you want to have lights on it pre-lit go ahead it will save you a lot of fat it's a seven foot tree Go for the tree that can reach closest to your ceiling. Nobody wants a little stubby one. Mm -mm. Just make sure that there's room for the topper. Now, according to this handy little sign that we saw in a shop, a seven foot tree should have 480 lights on it. No, <coughs> you put as many lights on it as you want. In this household, 10 times that amount, 4,500 lights go on the tree. A thousand are just wound around the inner trunk to create a sense of depth. We do like depth in this household. Don't just stick everything on on the outside. With all the branches in the correct place, this is when we, slash Michael, arranges the remaining 3,500 lights on the tree. We use cluster lights because they're nicely spread out and it removes the very obvious line of lights that you f can follow around the tree. That's a personal hatred of mine. If you like it, each to their own. Go for clusters if you can, wind them in and out, create that feeling of depth. It'll look wonderful when you're done. Always start off on the cups of tea. Typically I'll get through three cups. Michael's will go cold. We leave the inner lights on a gentle twinkle setting, just for the shits and giggles. If you've got any lights left over when you've finished winding them around your tree, stick them on the floor, whack a skirting around the feet. No one wants to see those metal bear boys and you have inner glow and warmth from within. Now, because Michael is super OC organized, we have all our decorations labeled in boxes. Yes, we are those people. It does sound a little bit over the top, but it does make life extremely 
easy when you've got as many decorations as we have. The special inner balls. We'll talk about the inner balls later. It makes finding them a piece of cake. Now, those inner balls. Get all your old decorations that you're not too pleased about, can't quite get rid of, especially shiny ones. Throw them inside so that they're right against the trunk of the tree. Remember, your tree is not a 2D model. There is depth to it and we want to we want to show that. We want people to be able to see it as they walk past and go, oh, there's a little extra something in there. Let me just have a look. Added interest. Once you've finished playing with your internal balls, that's the time to add any extra bits. In this household, because we're not camp enough, we add sticks of frosted ivy. Go big or go home. None of that less is more rubbish. It's Christmas. More is more. Less isn't more. You don't want one light on your tree. That would look shit. Michael and I are lucky enough to have a long history together. We've been together 16 years and our tree is definitely a memory tree. Every single decoration on this tree has a special place in our hearts. It could represent a skill, a family member, a lost loved one, a place that we've been, everything that is there for a reason. So you can look at the tree and you can see a memory. I remember being in that place. I remember that dog that used to bark. <laughs> Don't be afraid to put bigger things on the tree either. You like a bit of booze? Whack in a bottle. Got a favourite Christmas story? Put the book on the branch. <laughs> you will never know, it will look quite good. At least it does when Michael's done it himself. We do have several rules on how to do the tree, but you wouldn't necessarily know it. Firstly, if you've got a decoration which represents you and one that represents your partner, put them equal heights. It represents the fact that you're equal partners in your relationship. So our M and our K, same height. If you've got any ones that represent your loved ones, we personally put them at the top of the tree, nearest, well, not the heavens, a giant Disney in our case, because we're slightly Disney crazy. If you have dogs or pets in the house, put any dangly bell type ones at the bottom. That way you will always hear when they're sniffing around the tree and you can shout at them from a distance. Shiny things, add them all on because Four and a half thousand lights isn't enough, apparently. It will create even more lighting, glittery, shiny effects. We do like a lighty, glitty, shining effect. At this stage in our household, we've probably been at it a few hours. There will be casualties, definitely with decorations, hopefully not with your relationship. By now, normally, we're on the alcohol. It helps. Tip from me, take a step back. A few hours in, and just appreciate your partner. It feels like a bit of a trial, but putting your Christmas stuff up on the tree should be a nice memory. So just take a step back every now and again, remind yourselves that you don't hate each other because of how they placed that star that Aunt Marge bought you four years ago, and that it really isn't a massive deal. And just be thankful for what you've got. The other rule that we've got, Shove everything you want on the tree, but don't put more than one thing on each branch and don't make them touch. We're not heathens, you know. With the first pass of the Christmas tree done, typically on day one, we also, we, listen to me, we also start on the mantelpiece. We use a hammer on this bad boy. We actually get the proper support for the um, wreath that Michael creates. Typically he's busting apart other decorations to rescue bits and make better use of them. He's a very clever man like that. What about the hole in the paint? Well, typically, a very tiny drop will cover that once everything comes down again. You might even get away with just flicking it a little bit and you can't even see it. But don't be afraid, unless it's not yours, 
to put some actual nails in to hold heavier things on the mantelpiece. Lesser mortals can of course just buy these pre-decorated and just shove them on the mantelpiece. Just do that if you want. Tidy house, tidy mind. You might want to give some thought to keeping it tidy as you're going along. Once you've emptied some boxes, get a shot of them. Clear a bit of space, mate. Hoover up all that glitter as frequently as you can. You know you're gonna be seeing that stuff for months to come. Make no mistake, I am very much the support act during Operation Christmas at the Pittock Bennett household. Now if you are in a similar role to me, I would recommend after about four or five hours of assisting, you take the dog for a walk and get a little bit of a breather and a break from one another. If you don't have a dog, borrow one and then things will all be well when you return. Although there's usually some strong words a few hours in. We're all right this year, actually. But this is the point that Michael has the hammer out and he's getting hangry. So it's easier to remove yourself from the situation. In my supporting role, as well as legwork and drinks, I must also sort out substance and um, as a treat, traditionally, after day one of the Christmas operation, we do take out. Which take out remains to be seen. We use one of these to help. Dinner is served. On day two, we move outside. We like our house lit, but in an understated and cool kind of way. Personally, when it comes to using anything outside, we use removable outdoor command strip hook type things. We can take them down at the end of the year without leaving any hooks on the outside. You don't want to be those people leaving hooks and wires up all year round, do you? Do you? Michael will hang some lights over the top of our bay. We double them up in advance so we don't have too many trailing lights at the end. And you might want to check the plug reaches the socket first so you don't have to rearrange everything later. Like our door sign, Etsy. Day three of Christmas prep week tends to happen whilst I'm at work and I come home to find all sorts of additions. I wonder what addition we have. The stairs. Well, this is a beast, Mr. Pittock Bennett. You have outdid yourself. Well done. Hand created from multiple different pieces? Yes. How long did it take? About four hours. By midweek, so just a couple of days before December, we have this bad boy. Michael would have started off with the plain wreath. Is it a wreath when it's this long? Actually, I don't even think it's this long. I think it's about five pieces intertwined of the fir tree material and then fed with extra baubles and bits and pieces. He's ripped off of other stuff. 
incidentally these lanterns are on a timer for a battery and they come on when we want and they turn off when we want it's all very clever Meanwhile, I'll be making myself useful and starting on the Christmas cards and some early wrapping, specifically those ones that have further to go and need a bit more time for postage. Got guests coming over for Christmas at all? Stick a couple of decorations on the landing or in the bathroom. Don't keep everything on the ground floor. Plus, if you do that, they're gonna assume you've decorated the entire house, every room. But you don't even have to. Just something in the landing and something in the bathroom. Then you're covered. On the fifth day of Christmas prep week, Michael rests. By which I mean he travels to the Christmas shows. This year it was the Ideal Home show in London. Because obviously we must have a few square inches of space left to fill, right? Oof. No, not for me. When he's back, I will get a run through of all of his new gear and then we will decide where we can fit it in. I've got a lot. Day six tends to be an easier day, by which I mean Michael finishes a 12 hour shift at work and then comes back but only decorates one room typically the last window left from the front of the house. Now, the star garland that goes in this window has a very distinctive kind of shape. So here's a tip. He always finds the middle of the pattern first and hangs it up in the middle of the window first and then works outwards either way. Again, we use the removable hooks. We learnt last year that sellotape leaves all sorts of stickum on these windows and we don't like to have to remove stickum. And as we enter the end of Christmas prep week, I'll start to find more little Christmas displays just popping up here and there about the house. There'll usually be a few lights appearing on things that previously had no lights. More candles will be lit. As Christmas items go out, we do also pack normal items away. We don't keep everything out all at once. We do not live in a jumble sale. What we do, take off all the extra bits and pieces, store them away and pack them away in the vast amounts of space we have left over once the Christmas deck's out. And then we can swap like for like. We don't need pillows when we have Christmas pillows. We don't need normal ornaments when we've got Christmas ornaments. We swap them all around. And as we enter December, that's pretty much most of the decorating done. Although occasionally I'll come across an extra box of lights and just know that something new is about to appear. This is when the Christmas card writing continues in earnest and prezzies are actually starting to be wrapped. I don't know about you, but I cannot stand a last minute panic and particularly hate watching people unwrap their Christmas presents when I only finished wrapping them less than 24 hours earlier. You've got to let them at least sit under the tree a few weeks, haven't you? Here's a tip. Not all lights that say they are warm are the same colour. A little irritating, but we can live with that. Oh. Incidentally, when is the best time to take down your Christmas decorations? Again, don't listen to me. You do you, boo. It's entirely up to you. If you're saying, oh, it has to be after the 12 days of Christmas. You can't remove it till then. No, no, not if that's not what we want to do. Thank you very much. Personally, what we do in this household, 
We want to get shot of it all before New Year. We want more room to have a party. No one wants to see a Christmas tree with nothing underneath it. That's just sad. And we don't want to leave or bring any baggage from last year into the new. We want a fresh slate. So in this house, we take all the Christmas stuff down by New Year's Eve. And then there's more room for the gin cabinet. My final edition on the 1st of December is an advent candle. I really like the idea of it. And because the electric bill is likely to be so high, we can turn off all the heating and the radiators and just huddle around it for warmth. And after all of this work, how does Michael feel it went? It's been fine, thank you. The mark of a true artist always striving for perfection, never quite getting it in their eyes. I think you'll agree, he's done a pretty outstanding job. And that is how we prepare for Christmas in the Pittock Bennett household. Mince pie? Yum. I say we. He does all the work. So how do you do Christmas? Leave me a comment and your thoughts below in the comment section. And have a very Merry Christmas from both of us here at the Pittock Bennett household. Fa -na 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 -na.